The Moon is Earth's only natural satellite. It is one of the largest natural satellites in the solar system, and, among planetary satellites, the largest relative to the size of the planet it orbits. It is the second densest satellite among those whose densities are known. The Moon is thought to have formed approximately 4.5 billion years ago, not long after Earth. There are several hypotheses for its origin. The most widely accepted explanation is that the Moon formed from the debris left over after a giant impact between Earth and a Mars-sized body called Thea. The Moon is in synchronous rotation with Earth always showing the same face with its near side marked by dark volcanic maria that fill between the bright ancient crustal highlands and the prominent impact craters. It is the second brightest regularly visible celestial object in Earth's sky after the Sun, as measured by illuminance on Earth's surface. Although it can appear a very bright white, its surface is actually dark, with a reflectance just slightly higher than that of worn asphalt. Its prominence in the sky and its regular cycle of phases have, since ancient times, made the moon an important cultural influence on language, calendars, art, and mythology. The moon's gravitational influence produces the ocean tides, body tides, and the slight lengthening of the day. The Moon's current orbital distance is about 30 times the diameter of Earth, causing it to have an apparent size in the sky almost the same as that of the Sun, with the result that the Moon covers the Sun nearly precisely in total solar eclipse. This matching of apparent visual size is a coincidence. The Moon's linear distance from Earth is currently increasing at a rate of 3.82 plus or minus 0.07 cm per year, but this rate is not constant. The Soviet Union's lunar program was the first to reach the Moon with unmanned spacecraft in 1959. The United States's NASA Apollo program achieved the only manned missions to date beginning with the first manned lunar orbiting mission by Apollo 8 in 1968, and six manned lunar landings between 1969 and 1972, with the first being Apollo 11. These missions returned over 380 kilograms of lunar rocks, which have been used to develop a geological understanding of the Moon's origin, the formation of its internal structure, and its subsequent history. After the Apollo 17 mission in 1972, the Moon has been visited only by unmanned spacecraft. Name and Etymology The usual English proper name for Earth's natural satellite is the Moon. The noun Moon derives from Moon, which developed from Moan, which derives from Old English Mona, which, like all Germanic language cognates, ultimately stems from Proto-Germanic asterisk non. Occasionally the name of Luna is used, for example for a personified moon in poetry, or to distinguish it from other moons in science fiction. The principal modern English adjective pertaining to the moon is Luna, derived from the Latin Luna. A less common adjective is Selenic, derived from the ancient Greek Selene, from which the prefix Seleno is derived. Both the Greek Selene and the Roman goddess Diana were alternatively called Cynthia. The names Luna, Cynthia and Selene are reflected in terminology for lunar orbits in words such as Apollon, Perisynthion and Selenocentric. The name Diana is connected to dies, meaning day, formation. Several mechanisms have been proposed for the Moon's formation 4.527 plus or minus 0.010 billion years ago, some 30 to 50 million years after the origin of the solar system. Recent research presented by Rick Carlson indicates a slightly lower age of between 4.40 and 4.45 billion years. These mechanisms included the fission of the Moon from Earth's crust through centrifugal force, the gravitational capture of a preformed Moon, and the co-formation of Earth and the Moon together in the primordial accretion disk. These hypotheses also cannot account for the high angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system. The prevailing hypothesis today is that the Earth-Moon system formed as a result of a giant impact 
where a Mars-sized body collided with the newly formed proto-Earth blasting material into orbit around it that accreted to form the Moon. This hypothesis perhaps best explains the evidence, although not perfectly. Eighteen months prior to an October 1984 conference on lunar origins, Bill Hartman, Roger Phillips, and Jeff Taylor challenged fellow lunar scientists. You have 18 months. Go back to your Apollo data, go back to your computer, do whatever you have to, but make up your mind. Don't come to our conference unless you have something to say about the moon's birth. At the 1984 conference at Kona, Hawaii, the giant impact hypothesis emerged as the most popular. Before the conference, there were partisans of the three traditional theories plus a few people who were starting to take the giant impact seriously. And there was a huge apathetic middle who didn't think the debate would ever be resolved. Afterward there were essentially only two groups, the giant impact camp and the agnostics. Giant impacts are thought to have been common in the early solar system. Computer simulations modeling a giant impact are consistent with measurements of the angular momentum of the Earth-Moon system and the small size of the lunar core. These simulations also show that most of the Moon came from the impactor, not from the proto-Earth. However, more recent chests suggest more of the Moon coalesced from Earth and not the impactor. Meteorites show that other inner solar system bodies such as Mars and Vesta have very different oxygen and tungsten isotopic compositions to Earth, whereas Earth and the Moon have nearly identical isotopic compositions. Post-impact mixing of the vaporized material between the forming Earth and Moon could have equalized their isotopic compositions. Although this is debated, the large amount of energy released in the giant impact event and the subsequent re-accretion of material in Earth orbit would have melted the outer shell of Earth, forming a magma ocean. The newly formed Moon would also have had its own lunar magma ocean. Estimates for its depth range from about 500 kilometers to the entire radius of the Moon, despite its accuracy in explaining many lines of evidence. There are still some difficulties that are not fully explained by the giant impact hypothesis, most of them involving the Moon's composition. In 2001, a team at the Carnegie Institute of Washington reported the most precise measurement of the isotopic signatures of lunar rocks. To their surprise, the team found that the rocks from the Apollo program carried an isotopic signature that was identical with rocks from Earth and were different from almost all other bodies in the solar system, because most of the material that went into orbit to form the Moon was thought to come from Thea, this observation was unexpected. In 2007, researchers from the California Institute of Technology announced that there was less than a 1% chance that Thea and Earth had identical isotopic signatures. Published in 2012, an analysis of titanium isotopes in Apollo lunar samples showed that the Moon has the same composition as Earth, which conflicts with what is expected if the Moon formed far from Earth's orbit or from Thea. Variations on the giant impact hypothesis may explain this data.